of lies. You see that, Richard? That cross is a teacher of lies. Because when your people, who has an infinity toward Jesus, an infinity toward Christ, when they see that, that image on your, on your chest, this is the reflection in their mind. It's a teacher of lies. Is this Jesus Christ? No. What is this? It's an abomination. It's a lie, right? That cross is a teacher of lies built under this man right here. He, Richard is doing something. Richard is doing something. There you go. There you go. Come on. Third, there you go. Don't put it in your pocket. Don't put it in your pocket. They're going to trash pay right over there. Give it to this brother right here and let him defile that image. You want the kingdom of heaven? You want to see eternal life? That's how you do it, Richard. Right. You have to defile right. the graven images and these things that this country has set us up against. Right. We cannot fall for the tricks of this country. This truth must be pushed throughout the state of South Carolina by all means necessary. Our people are in desperate need of God's laws out here. We're the men to stand boldly to get the job done against all opposition that standeth in our way. And opposition will come. In fact, it's already here. Every day we put our lives on the line to save our people. Exactly. And that's even in the midst of all the opposition that come our way. But this is our mission. It doesn't matter how we feel or what we think. We all have our own issues. But who's going to rise up when the Most High calls? It's time to gather the saints from Columbia to Spartanburg, Charleston to Myrtle Beach. We hit the streets for the lost sheep. So men of war, gather yourselves together. Let's get ready for battle. Strap your boots, no excuse, let's push this through. Whether it's two by two or the whole crew, get ready, we coming through. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel, united in Christ, is a non violent Bible-based movement. IUIC. You said that you wore the cross for. Tell me what. Tell me what you told him. Why you wore the cross? To remember, so that you can remember that he died for your sins. Right. All right. I'm gonna show you what you. Here's how you get remembrance. Give me numbers. Bring it out. You know. And then I want Isaiah 30, 22. How you doing, my brother? What's your name? Mike. Mike. Yeah, I want numbers uh 15. 15. Well, numbers 15, and then I want Isaiah 30, 30 and 22. Read this in numbers real quick. Numbers chapter 15 verse 38 Speak unto the children of Israel And bid them that they make them fringes In the borders of their garments You see this right here? These are fringes, did you know that? You probably see everybody got these on But you didn't know what they were, right? These are. This is a law He said, bid the children of Israel Because you're the children of Israel That they make them fringes In the borders of their garments uh -huh. Throughout their generation Meaning as long as we're generating You're supposed to be putting on fringes on your clothes as long as we're having children, we're supposed to be teaching our children to put fringes on our clothes. Now, let's, fi let's find out why. Because Jesus died for our sins, which means that now we're supposed to do what? Keep the commandments. Because he's the example that we're supposed to follow, right? right. So he died for our sins so that we could keep the commandments, showing that we could keep the commandments and be perfect in this flesh. Now, we must follow his example. Did Christ wear the cross? No, he, no. He died what, did, on the cross. what did he wear as a symbol of keeping the commandments? What did Christ wear as a symbol of keeping the commandments? Give me the hem of the garment. What did Christ wear as a symbol for keeping his father's commandments? And those, it don't worry. If you don't know, hell, guess what? We didn't know either. We didn't know either, but I'm going to show you. Uh, I'll hold that until they get it. Go back to Numbers and read this again. Numbers. Numbers chapter 15 verse 38 Come on. Speak unto the children of Israel I'm speaking to the children of Israel right now Come on And bid them Command them That they make them fringes In the borders of their garments You're supposed to put fringes on your clothes Come on Throughout their generation Meaning forever Read And that they put upon the fringe Of the borders A ribbon of blue So on top of this fringe The gold is the, is the fringes On top of this fringe Goes a ribbon of blue So if I saw Mike down the street I don't know Mike from a can of paint, right? I'm just asking your name. I don't know you. But if I saw you and you had these on your garment, you know what the first thing out of my mind would be like? 
Oh, he know he's an Israelite, right. and he's trying to keep God's commandments because right. he got on fringes and a border of blue. Right. Yeah. Ain't none of us got it right yet. Ain't no, we all still crazy as hell. Yeah. We all still trying to ward ourselves away from sin. Yeah. We're all still striving for perfection right. under Christ, right? Yeah. That's what we're all doing. But this right here is a symbol that you should be wearing as a sign that you know and understand that you got to keep the commandments of God. Right. Right. Not the cross. Read on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe. It shall be unto you for a fringe. That you may look upon it. So you can look on the fringe. And remember all the commandments of the Lord. So this right here is, the, is your remembrance and to remind you to keep the commandments of God. Come on. And do them. And, and do them. Come on. And ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes. Uh -huh. After which he used to go a horn. So he said, you look on the fringes so that you seek not after your own heart and your own mind, after which you used to go a horn. Meaning the sin that you used to be caught up in. Now I'm going to show you something. First give me Habakkuk 2, and then I want Isaiah 30 and 22. I want Habakkuk chapter 2 real quick. Because you believe in God, right? You believe in God, right? We believe in God. You don't see us with no cross on. If you believe, then these scriptures are going to bear witness with you and what you believe and how you believe. Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 18. What profited the graven image? The Bible says what profit is there in the graven image? This is a graven image meaning somebody had to take a piece of wood, cut this out, carve it out and make it so that you could wear it. He said what profit is there in the graven image? Come on. That the maker thereof hath graven it. Uh -huh. The molten image. It's a molten image and a teacher of lies. It's a teacher of lies. Now, what does this, what lie does this cross teach? I'm going to show you. Uh, brother Eric, right? Eric, let's look at the cross. What's your name, my brother? Richard. Richard. Let's look at Richard's cross. Richard Allen. Richard Allen. When we look at Richard's cross. That's the name. That's the first black Methodist bishop. Okay, Mr. Richard Allen. When you look at Richard's cross, what is the first imagery that pops into your mind when you look at the signs of these men right here? What image do you see when you look at this cross? Look down here. These are the examples of Jesus Christ. When you look at this cross, what image do you what image comes to mind out of these? This one? This is uh, which one? This one? With the thorns. With the thorns. Oh, this one right here. This right here. Read that part again. And a teacher of what? And a teacher of lies. You see that, Richard? That cross is a teacher of lies. Because when your people who has an infinity toward Jesus, an infinity toward Christ, when they see that, that image on your, on your chest, this is the reflection in their mind. It's a teacher of lies. Is this Jesus Christ? No. What is this? It's an abomination. It's a lie, right? That cross is a teacher of lies built under this man right here. Now, give me that in Isaiah. Give me that in Isaiah real quick. Read this. I'm going to show you what you're supposed to do. This ain't me saying this. This is God telling you this, uh, Brother Richard. Read. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 22. You believe in God. In the eyes of God, in the eyes of the angels, in the eyes of the prophets on earth, you believe in God. You're going to do what God say do. Read. Ye shall defile also the covering of the graven images. God says you should defile the covering of those graven images. Come on. Of silver. Of silver. And the ornament of the molten images. And the ornament of that molten image. Come on. Of gold. Uh huh. Thou shalt cast them away. What did God tell Richard to do? Shall cast them away. What did God tell Richard to do? Cast them away. Joshua 6, what did God tell him to do? Cast them away. God says you're supposed to cast that away because somebody told you a lie. Somebody gave you this and or you bought it as a, a as a token of truth, but it's really a lie. The lie that you said that this is the image that comes to people's mind. Did you agree to that? So do you agree to this? Read that again. I agree. Thou shalt cast them away. Do you agree to that? So what you gonna do, Richard? We waiting in the eyes of the angels and the Lord, in the eyes of the prophets. We looking to see if you gonna cast it away. They're gonna cast it away. Why? 
No, because you're gonna teach her a lie. That's, right. That's what you're gonna do. It's a, it's a. Listen, read it again. Thou shalt cast them away. God says the molten images. Okay then. If she loves Jesus, listen, listen, Richard. G hey, Richard, listen. We love Jesus. That's right. We love Jesus. But Jesus, the Christ that we love, is a black man written in Revelations chapter uh, one, verse fourteen. Yeah. He did. He died. Now nah, he didn't die on that cross. He died on a cross. Right. Right. All of our people died on a cross during that time. Right. God just told us that these images are, are teachers of lies right. because they teach us that this is the man that died for you. Right. That's what this teaches. That cross teaches that this is the man that died for you. Is this the man that died for you? No. No. So what is that cross? A representation of lies. Read right. that again. Thou shalt cast them away. Read it from the top. Ye shall defile also the covering of the graven images. God says we should defile those things. You know that he told us to go throughout the uh, the cities and burn everything that was uh, that was adulterous. We had to tear down everything that was adultery. Now he's telling us to defile those graven images. Come on. Of silver. Of silver. And the ornament of the molten images. And the ornament of that molten image. This is a molten image. It's sin. Give me the uh, give me give me the commandment in uh Exodus 20. Give me the commandment. Bring it out. Read that. This is the commandment that hold on. He Richard is doing something. Richard is doing something. There you go. There you go. Come on. Throw it. There you go. Don't put it in your pocket. Don't put it in your pocket. They're gonna trash pan right over there. Give it to this brother right here and let him defile that image. Let him do and get it get him out of here. Get the most high God a hand. Give the most high God a hand. The Lord got the victory just now. You just gave the Lord a victory. You want it, you want the kingdom of heaven? You want to see eternal life? That's how you do it, Richard. You have to defile the graven images and these things that this country has set us up against. Right. We cannot fall for the tricks of this country. We cannot fall for the lies that they have told us. Right. This is not Jesus Christ. Right. Our Lord and Savior is a black man who died on the cross for you. Right. A black man that told you to defile those graven images. Right. Right. That is what you just, you just did. Give me that uh, one and the angels rejoice. Uh, you know what I want? Give me that real quick. Because the angels in heaven rejoice at what you just did. Right. You, you may think that we're doing this to appease ourselves. We fighting for the same kingdom that you fighting for, bro. Right. We fighting for the same eternal life that you fighting for, bro. But it's going to take us hearing the word of God and following his commandments. Now, what you got to do, Richard, is you got to get fringes. This is what you put on your garment. You go teach your mama about Numbers chapter 15 and you read her the That's verses right. so that she can put fringes on her clothes, so that you can put fringes on your clothes and you start keeping God's commandments. Right. And then you come down the street to the school. You come to the school so that you can get with brothers of like mind who believe in the kingdom of heaven, right. who serve God with fear, who stand up for this Bible so right. that you can inherit the kingdom of heaven. Because right. lo and behold, it's on the way, bro. What you're looking at is not happening just in Colombia. This is happening all around the world. Right now we're in Africa. Right now we're in, J in Japan. Right now we're in China. Right now we're, we're all over the states. Every 50 state is being hit. We're on all of the islands right now teaching the word of God. Right. I can pull up I can pull up photos and videos right now showing you the same thing that we're doing here today is happening all over the earth right this very moment. Why? Because the spirit of the Lord is on the earth. Here's the angels that rejoice. Come on. Chapter 15, verse 7. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven. Joy is going to be in heaven because the sons of God is waking up. The right. sons of the Most High God are not longer, no longer calling themselves African American. Right. They're no longer calling themselves niggas and thugs, and they're not longer being viewed as coons on earth. Right. We are standing up in the boldness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as gods on this earth. That's right. Read. Joy shall be in heaven Come on. over one sinner that repented. It says joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented. Over one sinner that repent. When you start casting those things away, when you start building your character off of the Bible, 
the angels in heaven rejoice, bro. Right. The angels in heaven rejoice. We all got an angel that report back to us. Give me that in uh, Matthew chapter 18 and verse 10. Bring I believe, it on. I believe it's 18 and 10. 18. Matthew chapter 18 and 10. Correct me if I'm wrong. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's it? Uh, yes. Yeah, oh, shoot. I know a little something. Come on, read that. Matthew chapter 18, verse 10. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. God says that we better take heed that we don't despise or offend one of these little ones that believe in Jesus Christ. Right. That believe in our Lord and Savior. Right. Be very careful how we deal with the believers of Jesus Christ. Come right. on. For I say unto you that in heaven. In where? In heaven. In heaven. Their angels. Say, what? What? Their angels. Meaning in heaven. Their angel. You have an angel that walks with you when you're keeping God's commandments. That's right. You have an angel that walks with you when you're keeping God's commandments. Yeah. You ever been doing something and then you had that second thought like, nah, I better not do that. You ever done that? Yeah. You know what that is? You know what that is? You know that you know that mind that tells you, bro, don't do that. Don't, 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 don't do it, bro. Don't do it. This is gonna be the consequence. You know what that is? That's the that's that spiritual side of those angels dealing with you. Right. That's what that is. But guess who's also in the midst of that? Satan. Right. Satan is in the midst of that thing like, nah, bro, go ahead and do that thing. You, can, you make that happen. You got to decide in that moment what, what, which, which, which path I'm going to follow. Right. Why? Read it again. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. Uh -huh. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my father. He says their angel always behold the face of my father. In heaven, your angel is always before the face of his father. Right. Doing, what is he doing? Read on. Which is in heaven. Uh -huh. For the Son of Man is come to save that which is lost. So the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, has come to save that which is lost. Now give it out in Revelation chapter 10. I mean, yeah, that's the wrong one. That's the priest here, right? Revelation 10, by the books. The books. 20. 20. The books being open. Now, what are those, what are those angels doing? If you got an angel that's walking with you, what are those angels doing when they behold the face of the Father? What are they doing? Bring it out. I'm going to show you. They are reporting on your life. Right. Today, you're going to get a report in heaven how you how you defiled a molten image. That's right. You don't believe me? I don't want you to believe me. I want you to believe the Bible. Read what you got. Revelations chapter 20 and verse 12. Bring it out. Yeah. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. So this is the day that Christ judged the earth and we're standing before the, we're standing before our Lord and Savior. The dead is going to be judged before God. Read. And the books were opened. Notice it said books with an S. And the books were opened. What are those books? Those books are the reports on your life that have been made in heaven. That's right. That angel that is always with you, that beholds the face of the Father, he's given a report on you in heaven. So on this day, when we're raised up from the dead and the books are open, read. And another book. What is this other book? It didn't say books. What is this other book that's going to be open? There's, there's going to be the books open, which are the books of your life. And then there's going to be another book open. What is this book? Take a guess. What is this book? You got the books of your life over here. And then you got this book. What is this book? It's the, it's the Bible. Bible. Yes, it's right. the Bible. Now, what's going on? Because remember, this is Judgment Day. This is Judgment Day. You ain't going to hear this in church. They don't teach this. That's right. On this side, you got the books being opened, which are the books of your life. And on this side is the book, the Holy Commandments of God. Right. Read. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. That's the Bible. Come on. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. So you're going to be judged by the Bible of the things that are written in the books of your life. Am I making sense? Do you follow? You follow me? So today, guess what used to be on your books? Guess what you did today used to be written on your books. That you had a molten image, a molten image of adultery on your neck. That used to be in the book. You just got rid of that out of the book. Right, right. You just you just got rid of that off of the book that's in heaven. That's right. right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't leave it a day and they're gonna find another cross to put on. Right. Because now you are putting yourself back in the same boat. Right. You just scratched that off of your list of sins that you were in the midst of. That's right. Now you gotta go put fringes on. Right. That's what you gotta do, bro. You understand what I'm saying? We're not doing we're not all right. This is not 
to uh, make you feel like we know something you don't know? Because it's obviously we know something you don't know, right? Our job is to help you know what we know. Because they're not teaching us in church or in school or in college. You're not going you're not gonna to get it there. Our job is to help you repent, bro. Come to the school and learn how to keep the commandments of God. Come with, come get with your brothers who have left this world alone, and now we stand up in righteousness. We're going to die for righteousness. We ain't dying for no stupid stupidity in the street. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. It's Nation Tyson.